I just bought basically all of the banana plugs sold by Sound Imports. 18 different types of banana plugs from cheap to expensive. So if you want to build your own DIY speaker cable with banana plugs, by the end of this video you will know which one is for you. We're going to check if they contain ferrous materials, what size of wire gauge will they fit properly, then we're going to make identical size cables for each banana plug pair and measure them. Also we're going to subject them to some punishment, see how they hold up. Finally, after we have taken into consideration all of the factors, we are going to nominate a best performer that has my recommendation. Let's go! Just so you know, Sound Imports uh, is an European shop, but most of the items are found on Parts Express or Amazon as well. I sorted the banana plugs uh, by their price, from the cheapest to the most expensive, using uh, American prices in USD. Why? Because many of my viewers are from US and prices in Europe are noticeably higher, probably because of import taxes. First thing we have to do is test the wire thickness. I'm testing 4mm thick wire or 11 gauge. If it doesn't fit, I'm going to go with a thinner wire, 13 and 17 gauge respectively. I'm not testing anything thicker than 11 gauge, even though some banana plugs do accept a ridiculously thick wire, I don't have such wire on hand, it's completely overkill and probably no one is going to do it anyway. Since there are so many banana plugs, when I comment on a specific model, I will put a picture in the corner with the model I'm talking about and the number. They are sorted by price, the number one will be the cheapest and will get progressively more expensive as the number increases till we get to the number 18, which is the most expensive banana plug. So let's do a quick test. From uh, all of the banana plugs we have on test, only one didn't pass the 11 gauge compatibility. In this case, for the next test, I'm going to use 13 gauge or 2.5 millimeter thick wire. This will make uh, an even playing field and some will argue that uh, this type of wire will be a top contender since uh, it has decent thickness good price and readily available. Now let's talk about uh, conductivity. I might be switching conductivity with resistivity along the way. They are strongly correlated. High conductivity means low resistivity and vice versa. Now the whole point of a banana plug is to make your life easier when you are swapping out cables. However, adding an extra element to your cable can make things worse if not done properly. There are two things that are important, the material from which it's made and the contact area and force between the wire and the plug and between the plug and the binding posts. If we take a look at the list of materials and their conductivity level, we can see that copper is the second best material on earth. However, none of these banana plugs are pure copper because copper is pretty soft. Usually they are made of brass, which is a zinc copper alloy. This reduces conductivity by almost four times, however, still a good performer. The brass is gold plated because copper oxidizes and that is very bad and severely affects uh, conductivity. There is no way to tell of what kind of non-ferrous alloy they are made of, but we can check if they are made out of steel or contain steel parts because a magnet will stick to it. Steel is uh, pretty bad on the conductivity scale, basically an order of magnitude worse than brass. I do want to mention that since a banana plug is such a short piece of conductor, the material is not the most important variable. Contact area and force between the banana plug and the wire is the most important thing, but we are going to check uh, this uh, thoroughly in the next step. Anyway, the material is a variable still, and we're going to check if we have any steel parts on these banana plugs. You will have all this data in an Excel spreadsheet, which you will find in a link in the description of this video, but the TLDR is that all of them are made out of brass, except for this one. Some have uh, screws made out of steel, some are completely brass, and uh, one has this pin which is made out of steel. I will talk more about these at the end where we will draw some conclusions. For the next test, we are going to measure resistance. To do that, I'm going to make equal length wires. I'm using the 13 gauge wire and this metal straw to keep the length identical. 
In the end, we have these finished cables. All of the banana plugs use some form of screw to grip on the wire, except for these two, which need soldering, and this one who needs to be crimped. If the banana plug has two screws, I'll use both to grab the conductor, except for this one, because the second screw is short and it's specifically designed to grab the cable insulation sleeve. The banana plugs will be inserted into binding posts because we need uh, to test how well they make contact uh, with them as well, not just the wire. The binding posts are brand new, made out of brass, only the nuts are made out of steel, but they are not part of the measurement. For measurement, I have this high precision bench multimeter, which can measure down to milliohms. Also, I'm using Kelvin probes, so for wire measurement, which effectively cancels out the resistance of the test leads. Should be fine, right? Um, not really. I got inconsistent results and got the value zero a lot of the time. If I go to the spec sheet of the wire and calculate the resistance of this uh, short piece, the wire resistance should be somewhere a bit over 2 milliohms. So definitely zero is a bad measurement. Started looking in the manual of the multimeter and checked the accuracy of the resistance measurement. And this is the number we are looking for. In translation, this is negligible since it's 0.03% of an already small measurement number. However, this is 0.005% from the range, which is 200 ohms, which is equal to 0.01 ohms or 10 milliohms. So basically what I'm trying to do is measure a resistance of probably three, four milliohms with an error of plus minus 10 milliohms. Ouch. Do we have a solution? Yes, we do. We bring on more equipment and leverage Ohm's law. I have this power supply, which will provide a constant one amp of current. This additional multimeter is to confirm that the power supply is not lying to me, because I don't trust these. And uh, with the high precision multimeter, we'll measure the voltage across the binding posts, which this time has an accuracy error way beyond our scope of the measurement. Since Ohm's law is uh, voltage equals to intensity time resistance, which is basically volts equals to amps times ohms, we have one amp of on the circuit, so basically volts equals to ohms. As a result, whatever reading of millivolts we get, that is basically the equivalent in milliohms. The cheapest banana plug failed completely, doesn't even grip to the binding post. The steel banana plug has an expected higher resistance of 10 milliohms. For the rest, measurements uh, varied from 2 and 3 milliohms, with some exceptions. Speaker snap banana plugs measured 8 milliohms, since it has some steel parts inside, maybe that is the reason. Also, some binding posts that are tightened by hand got some suspiciously high numbers, like this model with uh, 31 milliohms and this one with 8 milliohms. Now, before I draw any conclusions, I did a yank test, because you will probably yank on the cable, uh, which is hard to reach, and the cheap one failed, and also the one with the high 31 milliohm resistance. I tried putting the cable on the other side and now it's scored normally and it also passed the yank test. The number 10, I tighten it uh, a bit and then it scored normal. So some banana plugs need special attention, otherwise you might be using a subpar quality cable and not even knowing it. And now for the conclusions. And these will be mixed with uh, objective takes, but also my personal takes, which means that some banana plugs are not particularly bad, it's just that I don't like them for some reason. There are a lot of similarities between them, so first I'm going to eliminate the obvious failures. Number one and number three, you are out. The cheapest one didn't even grip the binding post. Also, it failed the yanking test. This is because the screw is poor quality and there is a high chance that the screw thread will be damaged when you tighten it. Same thing for this one, screw was destroyed, but somehow it got stuck in a convenient way and didn't fail the test. Number two, full steel, cannot be recommended and therefore crossed out the list. Number four and seven are banana plugs that don't particularly feel audio grade. They are more likely to belong in an electrician's uh, toolkit. The speaker snap has higher resistance than the rest of the pack and the stackable banana is just awkward to build. I think I even soldered them uh, wrong. You should probably leave the hole open so you can daisy chain banana plugs and solder on the exterior. 
too much of a hassle for my taste even though performance is okay if you solder them correctly. Now let's talk about the ones uh, which you hand tighten. These ones are a mixed bag, they perform good if you make the cable correctly, but there is a real chance that you will not. This one I'm confident that you will get it right if you pay enough attention, but these two I will cross them out and not recommend them. There are two ways to wire them, the conventional way, and it's way too difficult to fray the wires through this uh, small opening and then tightening the plug. I mean, you can do it, but you have no idea if you've done it right. Number 15 fared well in the test, but just so you know, I did a yanking test before the measuring and this banana plug failed that time. After taking my time with it, I managed to install the wire properly. The other mounting options works very well, however the wire is very exposed and it will suffer oxidation which will increase the resistivity significantly. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, let me know, but uh, at the moment I don't like them. Whatever's left performs without any issues, however I want to eliminate two more. This one doesn't even look like a banana plug with its naked design and it only accepts 13 gauge wire. And this one bends if you have the audacity to tighten the screw. As we approach the end, let's give some awards. We have the best budget, number five. This is a crimp banana plug, so uh, you do need to have some crimping pliers. I crimped them in two spots, got very good resistance value, and there is no cheap screw you need to worry about because there is none. Next, we have the top performer, which is number 14. These scored the best on the resistance measurement, they have two screws which can be torqued like crazy with the included hex key. They accept all the way to 8 gauge wire or 8 millimeter. If you do pick these, I suggest you indeed use the thickest wire possible, otherwise the wire will be easily exposed to air and oxidize. If you don't plan to use jumbo wires, then I suggest to pick the best value and also my recommendation, which is number 8, the Nakamichi banana plugs. They look identical to those at number 6, but those scored worse on the resistance measurement. These are just perfect. Good price, except uh, 13 gauge wire, two screws, the screws are large and you are not afraid to torque them down. Perfect. I have one honorable mention, it's just my favorite, but too expensive compared to the Nakamichi to have a spot on the podium. The QED banana plugs. They just feel so awesome when you click them in place. By the way, the worst feeling is the BFA style. I don't know, it's a, it's a grinding feeling and doesn't insert smoothly. It gives you the impression that you are scratching the surface of the binding post when you force them in, since uh, they have uh, this uh, sharp edge. And since we are talking about uh, banana plug styles, the expanding tips are also kind of weird because they defeat the whole purpose of a banana plug. Since I have to manually tighten them every time you connect them, I thought the banana plugs should be an effortless swap. Anyway, the clip style of the QED is the most satisfying to use. It's like shutting the door of an expensive German car. However, I do want to mention that uh, one of the screws broke when I tightened it down. Now it's basically stuck there forever. Don't know if I was just unlucky or that's a problem that needs to be addressed. Anyway, my recommendation still remains with the Nakamichi. Next time I'm going to show you how to make a cable uh, using those banana plugs. So subscribe and stay tuned. Peace!